the AC polyphase system. And Morgan uh, doesn't want to help him. Now the question is, why doesn't Morgan ultimately want to help him? And I think the reason was he didn't know how to build customers. He was also involved in a steel strike. There was a lot of anarchy at, at, the, at the time. And he could not conceive of what Tesla was saying, that the revenues would come in in a different way. He was also making money with his copper, lumber, and rubber. So he wanted wires. He knew how to build customers, and he had a very stable system, and Tesla was threatening all of that. So Tesla is now freaking out, and he goes back to his house, <laughs> and to his lab, and he sends electricity through his body to soothe himself. And I found letters uh, to that effect. This is inside his lab at Wardenclyffe. And I, I think of like Bela Lugosi in uh, Dracula, you know, this going down in there, or, or Frankenstein. This is his actual lab. And Catherine now is in, in tears. She tries to meet with Morgan to get more money. Because Tesla says, I'm going to advance the world a century. Uh, and and, and uh, Morgan, of course, won't meet with her. And he borrows some money from Robert Johnson. He has a deal with uh, Ryan. Ryan gave, gives him $10,000 and is going to give him the balance, another 90000 He meets with Morgan. I actually found the actual days in, in November, 1905, I think. And the deal doesn't fall through because Morgan diverts him into, uh, a different, uh, into the equitable life insurance company. So here's Tesla's idea of sending power around the world, uh, wireless communication. This is downstairs. The, the tower goes 120 feet down into the base, and he's got tunnels underneath with earth grippers, which is huge pieces of metal which are gripping the earth, which is going to electrify the whole earth. And this is the whole idea of really getting into you know, the mis mystery of, of really resurrecting Wardenclyffe, not just the tower, but what's going on inside the generators and underneath as well. And here's Tesla's handwriting, pleading with Morgan. Uh, I, he, and he says, uh, you know, let me see if I can find the clip. Uh, he, tell, he says to Morgan, once you say no, it is no. May gravity repel instead of attract. May right become wrong. All reason must founder on the rock of your brutal resolve. Is there nothing I can say that can make you a new offer? I tell you I shall return your investment a hundredfold. I'm like a man swimming against the tide that is carrying him down. I tell you, I shall advance the world a century. And uh, Morgan doesn't, uh, won't agree. And, and I think a good story of Morgan, I think you have to see Morgan in many lights and not just see him as a bad guy, but see him as a complex person trying to control the world with, you, with a steel strike and anarchy and not really knowing what Tesla's wild card is all about. So Tesla's last hope is with Stanford White, who's a good friend of Morgan's, who's built Madison Square Garden with Morgan. So he goes to White, and White says, I'll meet with Morgan, and I think maybe I can get the 75 grand that you need, which is pocket change to Morgan. And so here's Stanford White at the time. And so in the Garden in 1906, a very, very famous story, Harry Floor now finds out, he's married to Evelyn, that she's been sleeping for many years uh, with uh, the great architect. So he shoots uh, and kills Stanford White. It's one of the most famous murders of the 20th century. And here's Harry Thor on a good day. <laughs> uh, and he went to jail uh, for murdering, you know, the voucher. Tesla goes back to his lab. Westinghouse wants his, his power uh, generators back. He's out of money. And so he launches Wardenclyffe one, one moment, and he really does. And this is uh, the tower as far as he got it. And you can see he built the top. Uh, and you can see the drama of the photo. Again, this is a Dickinson Allen photo. And Tesla's handwriting falls apart. He's, he's, he's crushed. He's, this great system that he's going to change the world, wireless communication, uh, the whole idea of the internet bringing humans together from all, from all parts of the world is gone. He just is crushed. And here's a, a picture of Morgan, how he really looked. He had warts all over his nose. And uh, it was very difficult to look him in the eye. And here is uh, the tower lit. And here we see Tesla crushed. And this is what happened to the tower in 1917. It was destroyed. So Tesla now wants to resurrect it. And just to show his great genius, he figures if he can come up with a better um, motor than the motor that's in the car, the steam, he has a steam motor. He tries to sell to Henry Ford. He can then get the money. He can make $10, $15 million on the selling of the new motor, uh, the Tesla turbine, to come back and resurrect the new Wardenclyffe. And this is the turbine which is a very uh, innovative device, which is used in like uh, jet skis, and it's also used in pumps. There's a lot of information on that. And here's Tesla's idea of wireless uh, transmission of power. He was also uh, involved in many uh, other things as well. He moves into the Metropolitan Towers uh, in 1910, and 
um, Morgan is dead, but his son now gives Tesla money. And here you can see, here's Madison Square Garden, and here's now the new tallest building in the world, and here's the Flatiron Building. Again, the whole idea would be to resurrect all of this. He builds a hovercraft with uh, John Jacob Astor, but Astor dies uh, in the Titanic. Uh, this is Tesla's uh, hovercraft that he flew in 1937. <laughs> uh, in 1915, Tesla and Edison went to share the Nobel Prize. It, at least it was announced, but neither of them ever got the Nobel Prize. And Edison forms a partnership with Sarnoff to start RCA. And Tesla's selling um, turbines to the Germans, hoping again to get the money to uh, return to Wardenclyffe. He then moves into the Woolworth building, which was the new tallest building. Well, maybe that was a big one there. Uh, and it's a magnificent building, obviously still built. Go into the lobby when you go to New York. It's just an incredible building. And then, of course, the Germans, World War uh, I starts. And you can see wireless communication is very involved. Tesla had been making money. He was helping the Germans in their wireless plant. He obviously, though, was a patriot. And once the Germans got involved in, in, in uh, the war against America, he ceased all uh, connection with them. Tesla is also the inventor of the Osprey, uh, the concept of the Osprey helicopter aircraft, where it takes off like a helicopter and then uh, moves into the aircraft position. He also wanted to have, everyone would have their own flying machine. And this was Tesla's idea. He was trying to sell them in the 1920s. It'd be $1,000 a piece. And uh, so for certain distances, you could have your own flying machine. This is a photo uh, of the Osprey, which was used in the, the Gulf War. It's a $40 million plane. He made the cover of Time in 1931. And uh, Einstein uh, uh, wrote him a letter of congratulations. He's the inventor of the flying wing. This is uh, the new space shuttle, which is yet to be built. And he also is inventor of Star Wars technology. Uh, he uh, was negotiating with Roosevelt and with many of uh, the other uh, Western powers during uh, World War I, probably World War II. This is what the tower, the particle beam weapon, actually looked like. I figured out how, how it worked, and so I put that drawing in the book. And here's a letter from Einstein congratulating Tesla. Tesla disagreed with Einstein on uh, some of his theories. And he also uh, uh, believed in the idea of cosmic energy. He had what's called free energy today, but he had a new device, which no one totally understands, which is going to draw energy from the cosmos. I think it had to do with the differential between day and night and the cosmic ray, uh, somehow harnessing that differential. And then uh, J. Edgar Hoover started uh, trailing him. Uh, because his son, his, his nephew, was uh, the ambassador from Yugoslavia, and he wanted to help Yugoslavia against the Germans. They were a communist country. And here's a uh, you know, sci-fi concept of the diabolical ray. Now, some of you might not realize, but uh, this is uh, J. Edgar Hoover and Nixon and his wife. Nixon was also an inventor in uh, vertical uh, uh, aircraft uh, ideas. And so here's a photo of his invention. <laughs> Tesla also uh, <laughs> fell in love with a pigeon in the 1940s. And Hugo Gernsback resurrected him in all these fantastic stories. He was able to finish the tower in fantasy in these drawings. And that would be the idea is that you could, you could finish a film on a very high note by showing the total vision through his mind and through this. And this is the Teslaic world. Uh, it's easy to view Tesla's story as one of tragedy. But this is not so. Early in his career, and for many years, Tesla lived the life of a bon vivant at the world of a story at the height of the Gilded Age. He had friends in high positions, wealth and fame, and most importantly, he lived to see much of his vision manifest itself in direct relationship to his efforts. In his own view, like a god, he helped tame nature's forces using non-polluting renewable energy to suit human needs. Our electrical power system and much of the age of wireless is indebted to him. True, his great world wireless plan known as Wardenclyffe was a colossal failure. But Tesla was able to complete the tower in his vision of fantasy form through the futuristic drawings of Philip Paul and the fantastic book garages like sci-fi magazines at Hugo Gernsback. From electrical power distribution to cellular technology to remote control robots, vertical takeoff aircraft, and even Star Wars technology, we see Tesla's handprints. If ever there was a wizard, surely it was he. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Again, I must say this has been a great honor for me. Thank you. I, I do 
have the book, and uh, we have some here for $20 if you're interested. Thank you again. It's, uh, this has been a tremendous honor, one of the highest points of my life. I, I, I mean that in all sincerity. Thank you.